Good morning and welcome to another edition of 100 Days of Devotion. This morning, before we get into the Word, let us pray for a minute. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've made. Thank you for your plans and your purposes that are new for us this morning. Lord, I pray that this morning as we share your Word, that you will renew our minds and that your Word will come to us in a fresh way, Lord, to give us new hope, to give us new perspective, Lord, and to ignite us with a passion to do the work of our Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, your word says, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so, dear Father, we receive new joy today and gladness. I pray that your spirit will just bring such a deep refreshing to our souls. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because the entrance of your word will bring light and give understanding. Thank you because understanding comes to us today. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This morning I'd like to talk about something really beautiful, a topic that again is dear to my heart. And every time I talk about this kind of topic, I get very excited. And we're talking about distributing the gospel. Very simply, leveraging world systems for the purpose of gospel distribution. Turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 9, I'll read the verses 36 to 38. The Bible says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. You see, the Bible says that when Jesus saw multitudes, he was moved with compassion because they were weary, they were scattered like sheep having no shepherd. And I think that this gives us what God's mind is when it comes to the gathering of people. You see, every time people have the arguments about whether or not the church should exist, whether pastors are necessary, this is one of the verses I bring to the conversation. When Jesus saw the multitudes, he saw that they were scattered. They were weary like sheep having no shepherd. The same word for shepherd is the word for pastor. So God wants us to shepherd the nations. He wants us to pastor the nations. And the question I'd like for us to answer this morning is, how do we use world systems? How do we facilitate the distribution of the gospel? Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Romans chapter 1. I'll read the verse 16. The Bible says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. The Bible says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So when we say distributing the gospel, we are really talking about distributing the knowledge of God. In other words, how do we present Jesus to the world in a systemic way that reduces barriers, reduces opposition, and causes men to say yes to him. How do we preach the gospel effectively? In what systemic ways can we distribute the gospel? Now, I want us to extrapolate some strategy from Luke chapter 9, the verses 13 to 17. For backstory, this is where Jesus fed the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. And this was Dr. Luke's account of that story now luke chapter 9 the verses 13 to 17 the bible says but he said to them you give them something to eat and they said we have no more than five loaves and two fish unless we go and buy food for all those people for these were about five thousand men then he said to his disciples make them sit down in groups of 50 and they did so and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and gave them to his disciples, who sat before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and twelve baskets of leftover fragments were taken up by them. I want you to understand Jesus' strategy. The Bible says that there were 5,000 people following him, all of them were hungry. And then when Jesus was about to feed them, he told his disciples to put them in groups of 50. 
We cannot talk about distributing the gospel if we don't talk about the effectiveness of small groups. So Jesus understands that if these people have to be fed properly, we need to put them in a system where they are properly cared for. Jesus understands that it will be easier for each disciple to talk to 50 people to ensure that 50 people have eaten and to ensure that these people are properly cared for, that they can gather the leftovers. So he says, break down these 5,000 people into groups of 50. So basically, those were 100 groups. So Jesus broke down the 5,000 people into 100 small groups. Now, when you start thinking about small groups and little fragments of gathering where people meet, then we can take the world. For us to properly distribute the gospel, we must be efficient in our thinking. And Jesus shows us an example of such systemic thinking, of such efficiency in distribution. He says, take the large numbers and break them into small groups. As a church, Jesus has told us, to prioritize our small groups and our micro communities. So we have micro communities, we have large communities, we have seed church, we have campuses and so on and so forth. And at every level you are growing. So the moment you are leading five people already, we call it a micro community. The moment it grows to about 20 people, we call it a larger community. When it reaches 50 people, we call it a seed church. When it grows from 50 to 500, we call it a campus. As a ministry, we are very conscious about distributing the gospel effectively, very efficiently. You cannot distribute the gospel if you don't prioritize small groups. Now, more practically speaking, what are the things that we need to consider if we have to effectively distribute the gospel? Now, if we must be efficient at distributing the gospel, we have to learn to meet people where they gather consistently. So, for you to systemically spread the gospel, you have to meet people in their schools, for example. Schools are so powerful. People spend more time in school than they spend at home during the academic year. Children go to school for 9 out of 12 months and in those 9 months, they spend a good amount of time at school. The rest of the time, they're either sleeping and very little time with their parents. So, as Christians, if we learn to take the gospel to schools systemically, we can take them young, we can grow with them, we can nurture generations. Think education system. Think penetration of schools. You see, the people of the world understand this so well and they spend time going into schools to evangelize their message. That's why when you study any satanic agenda, one of them usually would be take God and Christianity out of the classroom, meet people in their schools. Another place to meet people is at work. If people work at an office, they come there every day, they spend about eight hours or more at the office, that's an effective place to mentor people. Meet people in their homes, among their families. These are places where people gather. Now, in our generation, you would understand and you would agree with me that people very largely meet online. You see, virtual communities have become a thing. You must learn to meet people where they gather. And largely speaking, this generation is gathered online. Sometimes you find people in the same confines of their home, but they are all having a conversation online, connecting with different people online. We spend more time with our online and virtual communities sometimes than we spend time with actual people. And if you have to distribute the gospel effectively, the first thing I said to consider is to consider meeting them in smaller groups or breaking down larger numbers into smaller groups. The second thing I said is to consider meeting them where they meet consistently. Now, that said, if you're going to meet people where they meet consistently, then you must leverage technology and media for the distribution of the gospel. You see, you have to learn to use social media platforms. You have to learn to use technology, your phone. You have to learn to use online communities and groups, the media, entertainment. You see, many things are changing. The world is fast changing and several things have moved from the way they were several years ago. Right now we have AI. 
you know, and you have to learn how to use AI. You have to learn how to use all kinds of tech and social media to reach people. Everything that has been created must be used for the sharing and distribution of the gospel. Everything that has been created. So you have to learn to create content. You have to learn to write books. Any way that we can systemically preserve the gospel is powerful. So consider creating content in systemic ways. You have to learn to immortalize moments, to systemically preserve information and to distribute it. We have the Bible today because some people were wise enough to invent the paper and pop industry. And right now we have books. We are able to read the Bible. Much more than that, we are all gathered on our phones and some people were gracious enough to invent the Bible in virtual form, in digital form. So you have to invest in systemic preservation of information. God is going to give you certain messages that must be produced in audio, in video, must be preached, must be uploaded into applications, must be shared virally. You have to learn to leverage media and technology and you have to prioritize the systemic preservation and distribution of information. You must immortalize information, you must preserve it, and you must distribute it. Build communities. Again, I said it is very important for you to understand that if you must meet people in their small groups, and if you must meet them where they gather systemically or continuously, you have to invest in online communities. Now, one of the things that will be an advantage to you in the distribution of the gospel is the sharing of your testimony, the use of storytelling. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Sharing your testimony is so powerful. You see, several forms of content are being released in our generation and it is important that we also join the train of content so that we can catch a generation where they are gathered. If you're here and God is giving you a message, God is telling you to reach out to people, one effective way is to prioritize online distribution. Share your testimony online. You see, it is important that every time you have the opportunity, you leverage all your platforms. If you are on any social media platform, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, you have to learn to use your stories, your feed. You have to learn to share the gospel. If the people of the world are bold about their evil, what more of us who are children of God? One time I asked somebody, have you ever seen when Satanists are threatening your life? They threaten your life with a confidence that says that they know that what they are threatening you with will happen if you don't comply. But sadly, a lot of times, Christians don't have the same confidence in distributing the gospel. You see, I'm one person who is very big on evangelism. And I tell people that we can gather in our little churches, we can gather in our cell groups, they can become warm and they can become tense. When Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, the Bible says, Peter came to him and said, Master, let us build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And Jesus said, nope, we've got to go down and share. We've got to go down and distribute the encounters that God has given you. Of course, there are some things that God will ask you to be discreet about, but every opportunity you have, you've got to share the gospel. One time I was teaching on evangelism and I said, brethren, you've got to live for God entirely. And if you have the opportunity, die for him. Every platform you have must be a platform for the sharing of the gospel. Next, you have to prioritize personal evangelism. You see, I tell people that a culture that is not distributed will be lost. When you study culture transformation and culture shift, any culture that is not exported is lost. God's intention is that we will learn to export the culture of heaven, that we will colonize all the systems of the world with heaven culture, that we will invade all territory, we will infiltrate, we will lead, we will influence, and we will inundate the world with the gospel. And if the culture is not being distributed systemically, it will be lost. 
that's why the Bible is God's wisdom for systemic distribution of heaven's culture. That's why God expects us to march on boldly in the preaching of the gospel. If we don't distribute the gospel through personal evangelism, if we don't learn to bring the gospel to our families, to our friends, to our colleagues, to the people that we meet daily, the people that we can follow up, then there's a problem. The culture of heaven will be lost. God wants you to be bold about personal evangelism. The question is, what are you going to do with this message? Many times we listen to messages like this and these are wake up calls. But are you going to wake up to distribute the gospel? You have to learn to bring questions to people and answer their questions. The Bible says Daniel dissolved doubts. He brought practical answers to questions. So share the gospel clearly. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. He says, be ready to have an answer. If people ask you why you're going to church, have a reason. If they ask you why you're praying the way you pray, have a reason. Know why you're doing what you do. So, again, be engaged in personal evangelism. Another thing to consider if you're going to distribute the gospel is to participate in societal development and community outreach. I tell people that a church that helps the community leads the community. A church that brings impact to the community, practical, societal, and social impact to a community will lead that community. You have to learn to join local outreach programs and initiatives. You see, if there's a disaster anywhere, the church must be the first responder. If there's a fire outbreak, volunteers from the church must be quick to bring aid and support. A church that meets the needs of a society will impact that society. When you start learning to meet the social or societal needs of a people, you will influence them with the gospel. You see, you must learn to invest in inner city missions. You must learn to meet the needs of the poor. The Bible says, he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord. You must learn to demonstrate the tangible love of Christ through acts of service. No wonder the Bible says in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good deeds and give glory to your Father in heaven. So you have to invest in practical acts of kindness. Volunteer in community events. You see, if you don't bring practical, sustainable development to the community, we cannot distribute the gospel. I've seen the effect of this and I can tell you it works. Also, prioritize discipleship and follow-up systems. Now, if we are going to distribute the gospel effectively, there must be clear systems of discipleship and follow-up. It doesn't just suffice in people hearing the gospel and accepting the message of the gospel. If we don't follow them up, they will not grow. So we must leverage different kinds of technology for the discipling of nations and communities. You have to learn to use all that you have at your disposal. There was a time in church when we got so busy and everybody was so occupied, we decided to start the online service. There was a time when we found out that it was so hard to gather people, we decided we would share the word, record it and send it to them and they were supposed to respond with their lessons learned. Use everything you have to disciple people, to bring God's word very close to people. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. In other words, apart from discipleship and follow-up system, you also need to establish accountability and mentorship systems. There must be clear systems of accountability. A practical way to distribute the gospel is in mentoring people. We need more marketplace mentors. We need mentors on the 12 mountains of inference. We need people that understand the reality of bringing God to a marketplace who can mentor a generation practically and tangibly. If the gospel will be distributed, we need mentorship. We need accountability. You must be accountable. 
You must have relationships with people that can provide guidance, support, and encouragement to you. The gospel must spread. The Bible says that in the city of Ephesus, the word of God grew mightily and prevailed. And therefore, lastly, I'll tell you if the gospel will be distributed, then we must invest in prayer. You see, no matter what we talk about, no matter what strategies we seek to apply, if we don't do it with the Lord, we do it in vain. The Bible says, unless the Lord builds a house, they that build are building in vain. When we go with the Lord, we know that we are going to have the victory. It's very important for us to invest in prayer. When we go with the Lord, we will overcome challenges and all form of opposition. When we go with the Lord, we will respond with grace and love. You see, sometimes you go sincerely to preach the gospel and people will not treat you nicely. And it is the Lord in you that will help you navigate such circumstances. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. God wants to go with you and you must trust in God's sovereignty, in God's power and in God's timing. Without prayer, you will go by your own strength. But when you invest in prayer, the Holy Spirit will endow you with strength. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Therefore, you need the Holy Spirit if you're going to be an effective distributor of the gospel. My prayer for you this morning is that you will engage yourself actively in the distribution of the gospel. I pray that this message will not fall on deaf ears, that you will arise today and you will take action. I pray that you will leverage every platform that you have, every gathering in which you have access and influence, everywhere, your family, your friends, your work, your school, your neighbors, your communities. I pray that in every gathering that you have access or any kind of authority, you will leverage that platform for the distribution of the gospel. I pray that you and your household will be saved. And I pray that you will trust in the Lord's power as you arise to take on the challenge of gospel distribution. I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you, will empower you, and will go with you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Now this is a message to listen to over and over and I hope that you will take action today. Remember, to share the gospel with someone today and to share the gospel across all the platforms and people and gathering that God has given you or brought into your life. It was beautiful having you on today's meditation. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow. God bless you. Goodbye.